Hi, hello. Welcome to another episode of Isaiah's Newsstand. It's your host, Isaiah Edwards. The date is May the 1st, 2024. Hopefully this episode finds you well in good spirits and high hopes. As for me, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, let's see here. Work was pretty ho-hum. Nothing crazy happened. I will say I got a little boo-boo on my hand. I was going to open up um, one of the um, trash compactors. Like, I got to open up a big, like, uh, sliding door. You gotta throw it open or whatever. And um, there's this, like, faulty panel. And um, as I slid it up, it, like, caught my, my, my shorts, my little hoochie daddies. And, of course, I kind of spaz and freak out because I'm like, oh, these are newer, these are newer, like, ones that I don't want to fuck them up. And um, they, they, they immediately, you know, slide off of my shorts and then, like, slice my thumb. And I was like, ow, 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 And then, like, some guy that we, like, contracted for another thing is, like, trying to talk to me. I'm like, yeah, buddy, I kind of can't help you. I'm kind of in my own little misery here. I, I, I didn't say that. But I was just, like, I made some, you know, dumb retort back to him and then, like, held my thumb and waddled off. Um but that being said, you know, it's fine. I got a little Band-Aid on it, you know, so it's all good. We're fine. Uh, let's see here. Food Corner from, uh, what was it, last night? Yeah. Uh, was the old pasta night. Pasta bolognese, you know, the old red sauce. Uh, I had some bread and a salad. It was very good as per usual. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you're all caught up on my Joneses, my scrapes and scraps. Um, let's see here. Let's go ahead and get this news booted up. Okay, all right. Uh, before we get into the actual news, let's go ahead and do our startup. I feel like I have a big news day to get through here, so hopefully I get through it faster, but we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. You know, me a cold, but if I don't, hopefully you enjoy hanging out and just listening to me yap. Ooh. Okay, that was good. From CNN. My whole family has perished. 22 killed in Israeli airstrike on Rafa. Hospital staff say. 22 people, including at least one infant and a toddler, have been killed in an Israeli strike airstrike over Rafa, Gaza, overnight into Monday, according to hospital officials. The deceased were brought into Abu Yusuf al-Najjar Hospital, in Rafa following the attack as their loved ones gathered for their final farewells. A video filmed in the hospital courtyard shows several bodies laid on the ground with dozens of anguished people, including men, women, and children, crowded around their late loved ones. People are seen crouching over the bodies with some of them caressing their loved ones' lifeless bodies. At one point, or over body bags, I'm sorry. Um, at one point, or at least one baby's head can be seen sticking out of a bag as the woman besides beside it shouts, my whole family has perished. Um, obviously, you know, it's very upsetting. It's very distressing. But I do feel like it's important to start off with that because it's definitely going to segue back into, you know, what we've been kind of talking about last week with, uh, you know, the, the college encampment stuff. I, I mean, this is why people are out. And, and talking about this shit and, and really trying to do the best they can come up with any kind of action they can to not just shed light about this, but bring change about this shit. Because clearly our government, you know, as the U.S., as Americans, are just okay with it. We're fine with it. We're, we are condoning it. In fact, we are backing the play so hard. We're trying now, which I'm going to get to, we're trying to make laws to further impede people from protesting about this stuff and in talking about this stuff it, it, it's insane to me but um I, you know i felt like one it's important to get to the story and cover it i felt like i was definitely missing my window here so i you know i wanted to get out and, and, and talk about it a little bit but just to really set the stage about why people are fucking pitching out tents in, in in these campus areas and saying no we're not leaving it's worth everything to us to talk about this and to show awareness about this shit and so solidarity you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's get into these other uh, stories I wanted to cover as well. Um, from ABC News, 
College protest updates. UCLA cancels all classes due to violence overnight. Um, excuse me, that was terrible. Protests have broken out at colleges and universities across the country in connection with the war in Gaza. Many pro-Palestinian protesters are calling for their colleges to divest funds from Israeli military operations, while some Jewish students on campuses have called the protest anti-Semitic and said they are scared for their safety. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of made the, these two kind of camps of people who are you know, pro-Palestine, um, who are you know, doing these encampment protests, and then you also have these counter-protesters um, who are, you know, in my mind, uh, pro-Zionist, and they're like, you guys are fucking up the vibes here, you guys are making us, and, and they, they say you're making us feel unsafe, though there are not too many examples to draw from, which is why I feel like, um, you know, some of these stories that have, you know, kind of been making the rounds as of like, yeah, what is it, last night and today are, you know, making the rounds. So there's kind of a bit of a hub here for the updates. I kind of wanted to click them and hit some of them. Um, let's see here. Uh, this is kind of one from the, the uh, thumbnail I have. Uh, campus po police deploy chemical irritant at University of Arizona. So let's click there and try to dig in from there. Um, do, 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 do. Campus police officers at University of Arizona in Tucson shot chemical irritant munitions at gatherings of protesters early Wednesday, the department said. The university's president, Robert C. Robbins, that's, that's a fucking awesome name, I guess, uh, had asked the campus police uh, and school officials to immediately enforce campus and use policies, all corresponding laws. Uh, enforce campus use policies and all corresponding laws. Sorry, I read that funny. Um, still great. They're like, yeah, no, no, send in the clowns. Time to bust this shit up. We're done. We're done waiting. And, and that's the thing. Like, you saw a little bit of wilting initially because it. We, we talked about how, like, they, you know, at Columbia and at UT, you know, Texas, they they sent in the cops pretty immediately to kind of bust some things up once this shit was making too much headline and it, it just had bad effects in those situations so they kind of backed off it seemed we were walking things down slowing things down but then it's almost like oh well you guys aren't gonna leave well we're gonna like make sure that you're one uh, suspended and from the suspension it's going to become an expulsion and then it's like oh we're going to send the cops back in um, also mind you the people who've been arrested like yeah they've gotten back out but now you know you're going through this whole process you know uh, post arrest and that's a whole fucking nightmare um, so it's a lot going on and, and, and but late there's more uh, protesters clash on UCLA campus LAPD responds let's click that one uh, clashes between opposing groups of protesters at the University of California, Los Angeles, included multiple acts of violence, prompting university officials to ask police to enter the campus. The Los Angeles Police Department said uh, officers responded to uh, assist campus police to restore and maintain public safety. Um, this was really unfortunate because I feel like in this situation, uh, especially with the UCLA, it's been very peaceful from what I've seen and heard. Um, up until you have this moment where you have, you know, Zionist protesters coming in and there was a barrier set up and they just break that shit down and immediately start getting rowdy. And then this escalates into violence and escalates into a fight. And from what I've heard, there was a gap time where there's literally cops on the scene and they're not doing anything. They're having a Godzilla let them fight moment. And I'm like, what? Like, no, no fucking way. Because I really do feel that if this was angled the other way around and you have pro-Palestinian um, people being agitators or you just have some provocateur in that group, then next thing you know, this is getting painted a whole other fucking way. And you still kind of see where you're trying, you see the media even trying to spin this to be like, oh, oh, I mean, this was both sides here. Both sides are being violent. Um, so yeah, I mean, I find that frustrating uh, in terms of just how it's covered and then actually the situation in and of itself. Um, uh, let's see here. What was another one I wanted to cover? NYPD says Hamilton Hall encampment cleared at Columbia. That was another big moment that took place that I didn't really cover um, NYPD said Tuesday night that Hamilton Hall and the encampment have been cleared. Uh, in a short media briefing, the NYPD said that the only thing that remains are the tents at the encampment, which the university will clear. 
Um, they say no injuries have been reported. Um, but yeah, that was an historic moment. I, I think it traces back to another time back in Columbia. I know I've kind of referenced that a bit with like the Kent State stuff. But like where people were like, yeah, we're going to like almost make like this last stand here. We have to. And, um, you know, it, it is a shame that these protests are coming to this. But you can just kind of see it where it's just like um, you have these administrators, you have these politicians, and it's almost like they're looking at their watch and it's like, all right, time to wrap this shit up. We're done. We're done listening to you guys. We're done hearing you out. We don't give a fuck. Fuck you. And um, that's where I wanted to kind of take it to the next bump because we're still talking about this college shit. But um, – oh, did I lose my thing? Uh, over a 1,000 students have been um, – arrested by the way between like throughout all the campuses in the u.s that have had active protests for these encampments and whatnot i felt like that was a really important note that i didn't want to forget i lost it in my little shuffle here my little notes tabs whatever um but this last bump i wanted to cover before we get out of this into you know the rest of the news uh also from abc news house passes gop anti-semitism bill amid college unrest um, so this is where you just see the, once again, the politicians injecting themselves and their narrative. And it, it just fucks me up that this is a bipartisan thing. This is not just the conservative Republicans, you know, like they're spearheading it, but you have at least 15 Democrats who are on board. And I'm sure there are plenty of people behind the scenes that are like, Hey, I'm fine with this passed. At the end of the day, you just look at the numbers, 320 to 91. Um, the House passed the Anti-Semitism Awareness Act on Wednesday amid unrest on college campuses. The bill, which was introduced by a bipartisan group of lawmakers, passed 320 to 91. The measure was led by Representative Mike Lawler, um, Republican from New York, and had 15 Democratic uh, co-sponsors. Many Republicans and Democrats who voted against the bill said it infringes on free speech, which I fucking agree with. Uh, it requires the Department of Education to use the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance working definition of anti-Semitism when enforcing federal anti-discrimination laws. The working definition says anti-Semitism is in part a, uh, a certain perception of Jews, which may be expressed as hatred towards Jews. The definition includes denying Jewish people their right to self-determination by claiming that the state of Israel is a racist state and drawing comparisons to contemporary Israeli policy to that of the Nazis. So essentially, if you talk bad about Israel right now with this act, if it makes it all the way to the Senate, gets signed, if you talk shit, guess what? You're being an anti-Semite and what you're doing is illegal and we can come for you. That's essentially what this act is trying to do here. And, like, I get it. Like, yeah, dude, I don't want to see racism. I don't want to see anti-Semitism spread. I think that's a terrible fucking thing. I think that's a very terrible fucking shame that people are using this moment to say, oh, yeah, I see how bad Zionism is, but I just outright hate Jewish people. So I'm just going to use this to, like, make people more upset. Make people, I'm going to do yay shit. I'm going to do Kanye West shit. You know what I mean? It's like, no, that shit is terrible. That shit is backwards. It's useless, negative, hateful speech. But calling out a nation state for doing a genocide is that's not anti-semitic i'm sorry like you know what i mean like it, it, it's very frustrating because you doing this kind of act making this kind of act a thing if it actually runs its way up is going to be something that's going to be used to cripple protest movements in a very massive way i feel um and it's very concerning um and it's it's crazy because then it's like you get to be actively labeled an anti-semite there's a law that's going to allow you like to boom just put a bumper sticker on your head and it's like because i'm telling you guys you're wrong here like because i this is not okay that over thirty-four thousand people and counting are dying over israel's self-defense over what happened on october 7th that's just not how this shit should be working like there are plenty of people who are saying it and this is why these kind of acts come out because you want to silence those people who are saying this shit um Let's see here. Uh, the definition of anti-Semitism has been fraught, especially amid the ongoing protests, college universities. Um, is that what I wanted to read here? I think I went too far down. Uh, this is what I wanted to read. I'm sorry. Several Democrats took issue with the alliance's definition of anti-Semitism and some of the uh, contemporary examples on anti-Semitism listed by the group. Democratic Representative Jerry Nadler 
who is Jewish, said he took issue with the bill because it would put the thumb on the scale in favor of one definition of anti-Semitism and could chill constitutionally protected free speech. Nadler, Nadler voted against the bill. So you know what I mean? And, and <laughs> in some circles, in some frames, people will be like, oh, that's a self-hating Jew move. And then that bill could be used against him. It's just that kind of rhetoric made real by a legislator legislature is just it's fucked up to me it's weird and ugh, it's icky as hell and um so yeah I, I i literally saw this while i was doing research on this episode and i'm like i'm shoving this in we have to talk about it because there was mike johnson on campus and he was yeah he was just yapping his fucking head off and and, and i get it like for mike johnson he is a died in the wool christian conservative i feel like for him it's not just a brand it's not just a bit i think like this is what he loves. Like, he he's about this shit. Like, Christian and, like, you know, Zionists, they go hand in hand. That's bread and butter. Um, it's, it's a very weird, long historical tie. I say long, but I'm sure, like, there's, like, political things that popped up that just made it, like, politically savvy to team up in that way. I don't know. Um, I know there was a thing on True and On I listened to the other day that was very good. But, um, yeah, I mean— it's just crazy that once again, I go back to this again, that this is not just a conservative talking point. There are plenty of Democrats that you can hear from and, and, and see that are just like, no, this is what I'm about. I, I, am, I am down to defend this shit. And um, it's like, once again, man, you were defending these, these atrocities by a nation state. And I get it. Like, I mean, America is doing and, and doing plenty of them. So who cares if it's an ally, right? But it's like, Yo, like at this scale, how can you really just just scoff it off and just say like, oh, these students don't know any better? Also, it's crazy that Netanyahu. I know I'm kind of just in the weeds here talking about this shit, but Netanyahu literally did a presser where he said that like Hamas is like training the students or some shit to do these protests. It's so wild, dude. It's so wild how these dudes will like literally, like these are politicians going full tabloid mode just to cover up some fucking ethnic cleansings. It's crazy what you're gonna do. Um, but yeah, I mean, I get it. With Netanyahu, he's trying to keep his job. He will fucking shake Satan's hand. <laughs> I know he will. I know he would. Um, shit, anyway, let's, let's move on. Uh, let, let's get on to some other news. Uh, I'm, I'm sticking with the ABC. It's on trend today, I guess. Um, ABC News. Boy, 14, dies after man with sword stabs multiple people near London Tube Station. A teenager is dead and a man has been arrested after driving a car into a home in East London before getting out and attacking members of the public with a sword, according to police. The incident happened at approximately... 7 a.m. local time when the Metropolitan Police in London were alerted to a serious incident taking place in Hainault, East London, to reports of a vehicle dr being driven into a house in the Thurlow Gardens area and multiple people being stabbed, according to the police statement detailing um, the early morning incident. One of those people, a 14-year-old boy, has died of injuries suffered in the unprovoked attack, according to authorities. Uh, police have not yet offered any possible motivations in the attack or the identity of the suspect, but they but said they do not believe it is a terror it is terror related. Yeah, like I'm sorry, and I know I shouldn't make light here, but <clears throat> it's like dude just went like medieval pvp mode it was like i'm just gonna do this like and i and I, i'm left to fill in the blanks here because we don't have a motive yet you know i mean i really hope i i hear something um from ye old london town um and if you're in the area and you're a listener please give me feedback if you've heard any more details um but like yeah that that's wild and, and don't get me wrong like i don't want to you know, encourage it or it sound like I'm, I'm rooting for you. And like, no, but it's just like, you don't hear about that shit every day. And, and yes, I did think about like, what kind of sword was it? Like, was it like a claymore? Like what kind of sword are we talking? But that being said, obviously very fucked up. It doesn't matter what kind of weapon you're using, whatever your reasons is like, what the fuck? Like, I, I don't know what, and this is why I, that, 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 that answer always comes like, it has to be like a mental health thing. Right? Because What's going on in your brain where you're driving your car, I guess, sword in the back, side, I don't know, wherever, I don't know where you're keeping that thing on you, but um, you're just like, yeah, I'm going to run. 
drive through this home. I'm going to do that. And then when I get out of this car, I'm just going to start stabbing. I'm just going to start swinging on motherfuckers. Like, like, look, this is oblivion. Like, this is an Elder Scroll situation. I, I don't know. I've never been to London, so I don't know the vibe like that. But that seems very crazy and unhinged. Um, and, and yes, not okay. I feel like I have to say that. Because once again, I'm, I'm just trying to make light of a really fucking city situation. Like, a kid died. And I'm thinking, too, if you're a kid, you're like, whoa, this guy has a sword. What the fuck? And then you get killed. Like, that's, that's sad. That's really fucked up. And I don't have anything to add there to make that better, of course. My condolences to the family. I'm fucking sorry. But um, fucking shit, dude. That's, that's a critical hit. All right, let, let's let's just move on. Let's just get out of here. Um, it's lighter news. Um, some might say good news. Um, from CNBC. Uh, let me read the headline here. Binance find found from Binance Finder. Binance founder Chang Ping Zhao sentenced to four months in prison after plea deal. It's our boy CZ. He's back in the news again. We got a sentence. So let's get into it. Binance's billionaire founder, CZ, was sentenced to four months in prison on Tuesday after pleading guilty to charges of enabling money laundering at his crypto exchange. You had the wherewithal, the finance capabilities, and the people power to make sure that every single regulation had to be complied with, and so you failed at your opportunity, at that opportunity. U.S. District Judge Richard Jones said to Zhao, in a Seattle federal court, according to a Reuters report. The sentence handed down to the former Binance chief was significantly less than the three years that uh, federal prosecutors have been seeking for him. The defense had asked for five months of probation. The sentencing guidelines called for a prison term of 12 to 18 months. So this kind of fits where where we left off. I um, was saying that like CZ was thinking, hoping that he wasn't going to get any jail time. That's what he was really leaning on, though. Obviously, um, they were really the prosecution was really looking to get him. They really trying to make an example of him. But at the same time, I, I still kind of maintain my thoughts and feelings. This isn't me rooting for the bad guy here, but we do live in a goddamn capitalist society, right? And at the end of the day, where CZ was positioned, I feel like he could have just walked off into the sunset and like. He would have been fucked in some ways financially, but I'm sure a guy like this has enough money to live the rest of his life fine. And, like, he was just jammed up, and it's like, okay, okay, fine, okay, fine, 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 fine. I'll come, and I'll sort this out. And, um, you know, I I feel like with the amount of money he's having to fork up here, it it is kind of surprising that he's even getting four months of actual jail time. Maybe I'm crazy for that. Maybe I'm a a little off. But I was surprised that he's actually going to have to, like, you know, sit in a cell for a little bit, do the little Martha Stewart vacation, you know? But, I I mean, definitely it's fitting in a way. You know, you did a crime. (laughs) You were doing some illegal money laundering here. Um, But that being said, I I know that there's a lot of comparisons to his his little rival, um, Sam Bakeman Freed. But um, I, I think the scaling of the crime is a bit different in terms of, like, well... He wasn't, like, scamming his customers. He just had, like, customers that are, like, unsavory Um, and, you know, that are criminal. But, like, we're talking cryptocurrency here at the end of the day. And I know, like, we're we're trying to make that as legal as we can, right? But, like, that's, I think, that to me is a real problem. It's not that crypto isn't real or anything like that. It's just inherently, like, it's, it's hard to make it a clean thing. It's hard to make it a regulated thing. Um, I, I think it's inherently a, a dark matter kind of currency and it, and that's where it shines and that's what makes it a, a thing that's never gonna go away. Um, sadly, you know, for better or fucking worse, right? Um, let's see here. Um, but yeah, I mean now, you know, for, Bi- what is it, Binance, they have a whole new CEO, you know, different vibes. Uh, the U.S. ordered Binance to pay four four point three billion dollars in fines and forfeiture. Zhao agreed to pay fifty a fifty million dollar fine. Binance has separately been sued by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission and the Commodity Futures Trading Commission over the alleged mishandling of customer assets and the operation of an illegal unregistered exchange exchange in the U.S. Now I might be wrong, and maybe customers did lose out in some money in Binance, but I just haven't heard of it. So, you know, eh. but all I know is that he was just doing a lot of untoward, unsavory deals and whatnot and moving a lot of money that he shouldn't be moving in terms of like the clientele. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, in, in a way, this is a closing of the chapter. I'm sure for uh, CZ, yeah, it's going to suck. But then you get to get out and then you're, you're a new man and you can get back to your money making endeavors. You know, it's just not going to be with Binance. Uh, but though he is a 90% stake holder in Binance. So essentially he's kind of doing the Jeff Bezos, right? Where it's like, hey, I'm not the CEO anymore. But like everyone equates that bald headed fuck. Like, no one talks about Andrew Jessup or whatever his fucking name is. I'm probably getting his name wrong because he's a fucking nobody. At the end of the day, Amazon is Jeff Bezos' baby, right? But at the end of the day, he's technically not owning it anymore. He's like, yeah, I'm just a, like, shareholder, stakeholder or whatever, right? Uh, kind of, you know, same thing, tomato, potato. Um, anyway, let's, uh, let's, let's go ahead and move on. I think we have, what, one more thing to cover. We've made it to the end. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Feels good. Feels good, man. <laughs> Clap. Uh, I want to talk about Donald Trump. But before I talk about Donald Trump, let's take a little break. Do I have it highlighted? I hope I have it. Oh, did I lose it? I hope I find the, the stellar Donald Trump quote that made my whole day. Um, I'm actually going to go back and find it. There it is. There it is. I'll get to that in a second. <laughs> this might This might be my new favorite Trump quote, but... I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's uh, scroll all the way up. Let's take our little break. Feel free to take a break with me. Maybe you're already doing it while I'm canoodling around here. Technical difficulties-ish. Ah, all right. Ooh. All right. From Reuters. Judge finds Trump $9,000, threatens jail for contempt and hush money trial. Ooh-wee. <coughs> mm. I'm lights out. The judge overseeing Donald Trump's criminal hush money trial fined the former U.S. president $9,000 for contempt of court on Tuesday and said he would consider jailing him if he continued to violate a gag order. In a written order, Justice Juan Mercan, or Morchan, I don't know how to pronounce their name, said the fine may not, um, may not be enough to serve as a deterrent for the wealthy businessman turned politician and lamented he did not have the authority to, to oppose a higher penalty. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he's been popping fresh. The judge fined Trump $1,000 for each of nine online statements that he said violated his order not to criticize witnesses or other participants in the trial. Prosecutors flagged 10 posts as possible violations. Uh, the post made between April 10th and April 17th included an article calling his former lawyer, Michael Cohen, a serial liar. Cohen is expected to be a prominent witness in the trial. Um, another post uh, quoted a Fox News pundit who claimed undercover liberal activists were trying to sneak onto the jury. Merchan uh, rejected Trump's argument uh, that he could not be held liable for reposts of material he did not write himself. Um, now this is where we get to this quote. Um, oh my God. I mean, this is just, this is peak Trump, um, in terms of just him popping off. Trump said, uh, Merchan had taken away his free speech rights. I'm the only presidential candidate in history to be gagged, to be gagged. They did it. They really gagged him like a little fucking piggy and put him on a plate. Uh, this whole trial is rigged. I, I could even say, I can't do an impression right now. Uh, I'm in shamble just, just reading this quote, though. Um, and he wrote this on his True Social. And this, to me, that's great. It's not a whole-ass, long-ass paragraph. He said gagged in bold letters. Like, this is just peak Trump, dude. Like, not knowing, like, knowing exactly what he's saying, but not knowing exactly what the fuck he's saying. It's just so funny to me. Um, and, and, and gag them they are, dude, for $9,000. And, and really just to kind of close out, I really just, I guess, wanted to talk about the potential prison thing because it's like, oh, so what, what, what does that look like? Um, they've spitballed in terms of like, well, maybe he would like do his prison in, um, Trump Tower, 
with um, his security, um, his Secret Service detail, because the Secret Service detail follows him wherever he goes. That that's that's an internal thing or whatever the fuck I guess. So um, you know, we kind of talked about that in terms of like, well, what the Marvel what if if he does go to jail? Um, but in the situation with this, in the contempt situation, like, the, what would it be? To me, the Trump Tower is a cop out. He should have to go to a jail. I don't care where. Like, I mean, it should be Rikers. He should just go to every jail. Whatever criminal is gonna do if you keep doing what you're doing, if you're found in contempt, right? Um, but you know, of course, I gotta make exceptions for his fucking orange ass. Um, but yeah, you know, um, he's gotta pay this nine thousand dollars. It's not like that's that much. Um, I, I mean, I, we know he cries poverty if it's like too much money, but he can afford nine thousand dollars. It's that's that's within his range. Um, so I'm sure he'll have that paid out. And I, I'm honestly, I'm sure it's not gonna stop him that much. Uh, let's see here. Um, do I kind of want to do a little bit of a catch up on the trial? I guess we can kind of run it a little bit, do a little bit of a rundown. Um. Keith, or lawyer Keith Davison, who worked with Daniels, uh, Stormy Daniels, to sell her story, said interest peaked or interest picked up in 2016 after audio from the Access Hollywood TV show was released that portrayed Trump making crude remarks about women. Um, I believe that's a grab him by the pussy thing. Uh, Davison had previously sold the story of another woman who claimed to have an affair with Trump. Um, to have had an affair with Trump, uh, former Playboy Bunny Karen McDougal, to the National Enquirer, Enquirer tabloid. Um, I know David Pecker, um, who was like running the Enquirer, I believe, or something like that, um, had like this long standing. Oh, he's a publisher, my bad. Yeah, the, the Enquirer's former publisher, David Pecker, testified last week that he used the Enquirer to suppress negative stories uh, about Trump ahead of the 2016 trial. It was like a whole catch and kill uh, method that they have. I mean, and that's essentially like a, an ongoing thing with like these kind of rag stories or whatever. It's not uh, that crazy. But I mean, the argument here is that he did this for um, Trump. And this is all a part of the, the election thing, which leads to election interference, which is the illegal thing that, um, you know, Alvin Bragg and his you know prosecution team is trying to, you know, paint the picture for. Um, just me kind of thinking about it, how this shit's going to go down, you know, just speculation. I don't know. I, I think really what it is, and I know this is like a really lame cop out answer, but I don't think any of the evidence presented, I don't think any of the Cohen testimony, whether or not you think he's a snake or he's really telling the truth this time, whatever. Um, I think it, it, it sadly, it, it's going to come down to the juror, the jury being pro or anti-Trump kind of because if you're anti then you're gonna be like yeah dude this is this is illegal he's done a lot of illegal stuff this adds up and like this is like Alvin Bragg you know the prosecutorial team or whatever they've proven it I, I agree and if you're anti you're gonna be like I don't see what the problem here is like everything like we're saying that's that's happened we're all saying is okay and the only thing that really is the issue is that the fact that this happened in 2016 so if it happens any other year who gives a shit like i feel like you can paint yourself in and out of this in terms of whether or not he's guilty or not guilty that's why it, this is kind of the weakest case out of all of them um but really looking at it it looks like it's going to be the only case that's going to actually be on the docket before and like actually wrap up before um the actual election which something I, I've, I've mentioned before like it's annoying that like it's lined up this way and like news media kind of covers it in like a slow motion kind of way like yeah oh it's crazy huh it's crazy it looks like trump's actually doing it and he's he's wrapped up the whole legal process and and we're not going to be able to hear anything until post-election and if he wins most of these things are going to go away it's like yeah dude you already said this shit before i know because i read it and then covered it why why are you gonna make me say that shit again? <laughs> I don't know. That that's a little bit of a news pet peeve that I've I've noticed. Um, but anyway, you know I get it. You gotta you gotta fill the space. You gotta talk, and then there's always new people to the cycle, right? You know. So there's yeah. That, that's a quick little weird catch up on the trial so far with Donald Trump. Um, I'm I'm sure the, the 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 big Trumpers or the super liberals are are on the podcast and they're listening to the day by day play by play. I, I like the little sound bites so far. I mean, there's just, to be honest, there's not been that, 
nothing exciting has really happened, you know? Uh, maybe the sparks will fly sooner than later. I don't fucking know. But it, it's just been a ho-hum trial, really, you know? Um, but yeah, that, that's it. I think we made it. All right, cool. This was a bigger episode. Uh, mea culpa, I'm sorry. But I feel like it could have been longer, so I'm okay with it. Um, you know, thanks for letting me rant and rhyme, you know what I mean? Uh, I love to do it. Uh, but yeah, if you'd like to help out support further financially, fiscally, uh, I have a Patreon, patreon.com slash Isaiah News. Become a newsie today. Uh, let's see. Free ways to hit me up, news one at gmail.com. Uh, feel free to find, follow me on any of the socials. Also, I'm one follow away on Spotify from getting 69 followers. So there we go. Also, we're getting close to 69,000, was it 6,900? Sorry, my bad. 6,900 plays. And that is a, you know, a little bit of a meme dream for me to hit. Also trying to hit 69 on um, my YouTube, you know? I'm a small bean, so we got to enjoy these little things, you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm finding a creepy crawl, but we're at 62, trying to get to 69 there. So hopefully you can subscribe. Uh, leaving comments help. Leaving reviews help. It, it, it just it gives me more traction, if you will. Um, and make them nice. Make them good. Don't be mean, please. Um, it really just it, it does do a lot. But really just listening is great. Um, sharing is caring, but don't worry about it. It could be fun, though. Um, but yeah, that's it. Uh, hopefully I see you soon for some more good news. I love you. Bye-bye.